Hey everybody, how you doing? Thank you so much for tuning in to Good News. I'm Josh Johnson, and I just want to say a very, very quick thank you to all of you, not just for watching today, 
but for watching period for for watching whenever i upload new stand up for watching for me to make new things i i appreciate all of you so much and i'm going to be on the road just so you know if you want to come watch me in person i am going to be in all of the cities you can you can go to joshjohnsoncomedy.com for tickets or to join the waitlist i'm going to be in albany i'm going to be in buffalo i'm going to be in nashville you can still get tickets to brea uh, oxnard lots of places coming up in april especially all Austin, Texas. I'm becoming right at you. Gonna be coming in hot to Austin, Texas, where I expect it to also be very hot for the heat to bite back. And if there is a place that I am not coming, you don't see it on that list, and you want me to come there, let me know. Drop me a line. Drop it in comments. The be- one of the best ways is to text me or to join my email list. All those things are great ways to let me know. Like, hey, you want me to come to Huntsville, Alabama? All right. Well, the way I'm gonna know to do that is when you tell me. So I appreciate all of you watching. I appreciate all of you that come out to the shows. I love meeting you at the Meet and Greeks. I do them whenever I can. And I want to get into a little bit of of, of good news um, for me. Um, I am a new correspondent for The Daily Show, and that is in no small part thanks to all of you. Um, all of you both cheering me on, watching everything that you've done for me these past few months. I cannot begin to repay you other than to try to keep making you laugh and keep doing lives, keep doing shows. I appreciate all of y'all so, so much. Um, And I want to bring you our first story of the night. So sometimes things happen in life that we can't explain. You know, they, 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 they are a mystery to us, especially when they happen under the cover of sleep. It's a terrifying thing to be woken up abruptly. I hate it. I don't know about y'all, but I'm I'm one of those people where if you wake me up like shaking me, I don't necessarily swing. I'm not I'm not really like flinging around or anything, but I'm not I I don't go gently, you know? I don't I don't wake up with a little flutter of the eyelids. I swing, right? But just not I'm not a big man, so I'm not going to hurt you, but I I do tend to roll over pretty fast, right? You could catch an elbow at any point i read about this uh man stung in you know his the test test uh man stung in testicles by scorpion while sleeping at las vegas strip resort now i think that for the most part we can all agree that there's lots of ways we would and wouldn't want to be woken up okay and this i didn't even know that this one could happen Honestly, I knew that there were scorpions in Nevada. I didn't know they reached bed height. I didn't know that they they were that good at crawling. Um, I thought it was more of a shoe situation where you had to shake your shoes before you go about your day in case one of them crawled in there. I had no idea they were coming right up to the bed and doing uh, doing terroristic acts like this. The, the thing that really freaks me out about this story is that a whole new fear has been unlocked like something i didn't even think about could happen now and i ever since i read the story i have not stopped thinking about it i i if i were this man i wouldn't trust sleep anymore i really wouldn't i would only sleep in like hammocks that were pretty high up and and slippery too like it would it would have to be like a a fear factor event for me to even get up there you'd have to slicken up two poles with lots of oil and then put the hammock on. But then the hammock, I wouldn't even want it to be too comfortable because it might be enticing to a scorpion. Basically, this man was was stung in his sleep. Uh, a California man staying at a Las Vegas strip resort over the holiday season said he's considered legal action after he said he was stung while he was asleep in the, you know what I mean? I don't have to keep saying it. I just... I would not only threaten legal action, I would just do the legal action. I would I would do whatever I possibly could to get some sort of I don't even know how you compensate a person for something like this. This is like th- this is one of those things where I I get it as like as like a guy everything that we have is pretty straightforward going on, but uh, because it's so straightforward, the threat of it being attacked, we take so seriously. Who would have thought that that in Vegas you should be sleeping with a cup? 
That's what I'm going to do from now on. I'm going I'm to I'm stay strapped up with a cup every night because that's the only way things like this might not happen. And the worst part about the story is that it looks like a baby scorpion. Baby scorpions, they don't really know how to control the amount of, of venom that they release, you know, like a, like a baby scorpion is kind of like me when I wake up just swinging all willy nilly, doesn't know how much energy to put into its movements. So, I mean, we're lucky that this man is alive. He woke up in excruciating pain during his stay at the resort, I bet. I just felt like somebody had stabbed me. <laughs> it felt like glass or a knife. I went to the restroom and I saw a scorpion hanging on my underwear. The fact that the scorpion, it wasn't just a quick like bow. The fact that it held on is also something that needs to be taken into account in court. OK, because that means that we're dealing with a, a totally different sting than some of these stings that people get on their toes when the scorpions just trying to get away. This is like very freaky. I like every time I look at the picture, I'm a little bit more stressed out about it because my only real understanding of scorpions is scorpion from Spider-Man. I do my best to not be around scorpions. I don't really, anytime I see them in like a Google images for some reason, I'm always a little freaked out by them. I can't imagine what this dude is going through, especially because he's from California, which is close enough to Nevada that maybe he has had his experiences with scorpions, but it's also far enough away that maybe he truly had no idea what was happening. One second, one second. The report indicated that Farchi, I think that's how you say his name, told staff he was in a live plane and blamed the Venetian, which I, I think is the resort, for the incident, adding that the scorpion was in the bed when he was sleeping. Um, yeah, unless you go to bed with a scorpion, unless you see a scorpion from across the room and you're like, hey, you, let's get out of here. Well, what are you doing later? You know, you want, want to come by my place? Unless you have propositioned the scorpion, a scorpion being in your bed is unacceptable. It, 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 it's, it's truly not okay, and I hope that he wins his case. Uh, but let me see if I can pull this up for you. When, you. when you actually go to the article, when you scroll down, his lawyer, and this is, this is not to throw a ton of shade. This is what I'm about to say is shady, but his lawyer doesn't look the most put together so i do worry about his chances of winning because his lawyer and him look just enough alike that you can't tell which one of them was stung by a scorpion and i mean that in the way of i need my lawyer when i show up for my lawsuit to look prim and proper because i might be disheveled maybe something happened to me that i i can't rightly you know show up to court looking my best but if my lawyer also shows up looking how I feel, that doesn't give me a lot of hope. You know, I want my I want my lawyer to look better than I ever could. And this guy, I don't know. I mean, let me see if I can show you real quick. Also, let me know in the comments what you would do if you were in this man's situation. Let me know how you feel about. Let's see. I'll read a couple of them now. Scorpions want love too. come through scorpion. Yes, it is like an 80s movie. Do you, do you see what I mean, though? Okay, so so I want you, yeah, looking. I think so, there's something about a fedora that makes me feel like you wrong. Like, anytime I meet somebody and they're wearing a fedora and they're making points and stuff, I don't know what it is about the fedora, but I just want to take what they're saying less seriously. And it could be an emergency. Someone could be yelling fire in the place that I'm in right now. And I could even see a little bit of fire behind them. But if they're wearing a fedora, I might see how this plays out. Let me see. They look like crazy twins. Yes, Foxy Blue, they do. Twins lawyer, thank you, Tamika, for, for seeing what I'm seeing, right? Because cause I just don't want to ima imagine we're in a situation where and, and goodness forbid this happens. But it's like Josh got stung in the face by a scorpion and he's allergic. So he looked like Will Smith and Hitch. Right. When he had that allergic reaction. And then I show up. Then my lawyer right next to me also had some sort of allergic reaction the morning of. And we look the same. That's going to hurt my case. 
that's going to make it look like clearly whatever I went through in that bad. If somebody not suing for it went through the same thing. Okay, let's see. Let's see. Let's look back at the chat. Okay, Spliffy Rogers, they look like Breaking Bad characters. You are not wrong. That's pretty spot on. Destiny Williams says his uncle could be. Maybe, maybe that is what's happening. They look like an 80s ska band that didn't retire yet. Andrew, wow. Once again, pretty spot on. Y'all are getting a lot of uh a lot of digs in in the chat that are pretty pretty much nailing it. Let me see. Oh yeah, if I got stung by a scorpion while I was wearing a fedora, I'd probably lose my case immediately. Some of you even have the scorpion emoji, which I didn't know existed in the chat, and I appreciate that very much. Let's see. I want to move on now to uh, our next story. Um, a lot of people say that baseball is the American pastime, but I think it's eating. I think I think what we've done with eating competitively and as as a, as a sport and as a human function is unmatched by any other country. I'll go ahead and say that. I'll go ahead and put that out there that honestly eating some form of eating should be the, in the Olympics. And I I think the only reason that they don't put it there is because the other countries know they wouldn't stack up. They don't eat the way we eat. We eat like big boys over in America. We're not doing what some of these other countries do where they just eat to live, to sustain themselves for nutrition. That's child's play. Okay. When you eat in America, you eat to really show up chewing. Okay. I hope you remember that. I hope, I hope that as if you're watching this and you happen to live in America, I hope you did your duty today. And you didn't just you didn't just eat for sustenance. You went ahead and you ate so that some part of the food wouldn't be there anymore. When we eat in America, we eat like it's an attack. You know, when you look down at your plate as an American, it's because it feels like that plate was coming at you sideways. And so what are you going to do? You're going to clean it. You're going to clean the plate top to bottom. I bring this to you because our, our next story is about someone who is a record setter. About, about someone who cannot be stopped, okay? U.S. man extends his record for most Big Mats eaten in a lifetime to over 34,000. And I know when you, when you hear about a story like this, when you, when you see something like this, you're, you're thinking, how? How? And that, that, that's when the American should pop up and say, how not? That's not even correct English, but like you, you see what I'm saying? Like you, some people say how I think he said, why, why not? You know, he ate two Big Macs a day. I assume he still does it. He does appear to still be alive somehow. And I think that he's probably going to keep going until, until the wheels fall off, until what I'm only assuming have to be dentures, uh, fall out because my man is, Remember, do you remember Super Size Me? Remember that whole documentary that that dude, all he did was eat McDonald's for like a month. And he was like, guys, it almost killed me. Right? Maybe. Maybe there's a bunch of negative health effects with McDonald's. Maybe. Or maybe you're a quitter. Because my man right here, he's 34,000 Big Macs deep. With no sign of slowing up. I don't even know why someone would do this. I don't know why someone would start this. I think at 100 Big Macs, I'd be like, I know what it tastes like. Because to even, to even do two a day, we're still talking. I don't even want to do the math in front of you because I'm not good at math. But like, if you, if you can do the math in the chat, two Big Macs a day, how many years is that? Maybe somebody will let me know right now. Let me see. I'll check the chat. We're talking two Big Macs a day. Is that 10 years? Maybe. Because this is the other thing about eating this many Big Macs. Big Macs have changed since back in the day. Okay. 
way back in the day, early fast food, early fast food had a lot of beef tallow, had had a lot of natural ingredients in it. It wasn't until the, the years on that they were trying to expand, trying to save money, trying to cut corners and stuff. So when he started this challenge, let's let's say he, he did start it, you know, in earnest, um, like like 20 years ago. Right. Those are some very different Big Macs than the Big Macs he's eating now. Those early Big Macs, that was real American beef. That was real burger with real bun and cheese and, and lettuce and everything. What he's eating now, I, I wouldn't wish on my worst enemy. Um, what he's eating now has got to basically just be plastic bags in burger form. Because uh, I know some people in the chat may come for me, but... The the new McDonald's is not it. They they've changed too much. The grease is different. the The fries are different. It's not what it was when I was little. And the fact that this man has stuck it out, this is commitment. You know, a lot of people get married. A lot of people say, "Till death do us part," right? And then you can see in their marriage, seventeen years in, they can't hack it anymore. They're like, "You've changed." But what? Was it mad that they changed? You said to death to us part, richer for poor. You know, all the things in the vows. This man made vows to the Big Mac that he's keeping because these Big Macs are very different than what they used to be. That meat gets gray quick. The soil is different. Yep, Gary, I believe that. Um, I literally was talking to my neighbor about this and she said it was all chemicals. A place in the stars, you're not wrong. He's 80% secret sauce now. Yes, James. James Chadwick, you're absolutely right. He has eaten so many Big Macs that he's probably full of secret sauce. He's probably 12% meat. His eyes are made of lettuce. This is a, a certain amount of Big Macs is no joke. And like, while I applaud this man for doing what he set out to do for some reason, do, don't do this. This is a bad idea. Like, I, I, I want to be clear, all jokes aside for a second, I don't know how this man is alive. I don't, I, like, I'm truly blown away. This is years. And that, and that, that Super Size Me documentary, it did, it did scare me a bit. And I definitely dialed back some of my fast food intake because of it. And this guy, honestly, makes me want to dial it back the rest of the way. I, I, don't, I don't think that... Like, he's got to have trouble breathing or something. 34,000. With no real signs of, of, of slowing up. Let me see. I'll, I'll, I'll pull up the article just to... It, it seems like he had already had the record as well, but he just extended it. Um, I might be mispronouncing his name, so, so be patient with me. But Don G Gorski? I guess Gorski. Uh, who is 70 becomes one of Guinness World Records' longest-running holders with intake of two McDonald's burgers a day. 70. Like, this feels like a young man's game. I, 70. Like, I just think about what the older people in my life were doing when they were 70, and I think housing two Big Macs and digesting them was, like, far off the list. Like, maybe yard work. Okay, according to Gorski. Oh, speaking of, uh, Gorski says mother grew worried as she saw his fascination with Big Macs blossom and tried to rein it in by making him promise to eat one Big Mac meal a day. So get him down to one. But she gave up on making him fulfill that promise in 1981. According to Gorski, she said, if they haven't killed you by now, go ahead. Which does feel like bad advice. Because some, something that hadn't got you yet doesn't necessarily mean it will never get you. But I can also see being tired of, of battling somebody for so long. Okay, let me see what you think in the chat. Let me see. Okay, geez, Louise. Mrs. M. Johnson said, you're making me hungry. I think you are, I think you're missing the point. What, what I'm trying to do is, is, is stop 
stop you from eating Big Macs. Because this is insane. Gorski met his wife, Mary, in September 1973, and he proposed to her in the parking lot of a McDonald's. Three years later, Gorski ate a Big Mac before the start of their wedding ceremony. I, you have to you have to give him some credit because he really put in that work. You know, never gave up. I'll, I'll be honest with you. I'm not consistent every day in the things that I say I want to do, even just amongst friends. Sometimes I'm like, man, I really want to get in better shape. I need to work out, do a little something, move my body every day. And I don't always do it. Like I move, but I move from the bedroom to the kitchen and back and stuff like that. If I have the day off, I don't work out every day. But this man kept it together. OK, let's see. Moving on. You know, you can never you can never tell exactly where or when your rescue is going to come if you're lucky enough to have one. Right. Let's say you're in a situation where you're on a platform and, and your car is is teetering. We're talking a real Avengers situation, right, where the car is like half on, half off, leaning and everything. You don't know who's going to come save you and you don't know how they'll be dressed when they do it. You know, I'm sure that with some people. They're, they're screaming for help, and then Captain America shows up, muscles all rippling, skin tight, outfit, shield, and everything. And they're like, oh, Chris Evans, I mean Captain America. Oh, thank goodness you're here, right? And then sometimes it's the Hulk. The Hulk shows up to save you, and you're like, I think you're going I think you, I think you to rip my head off. I can't tell if help is here or not, you know? These people, these... uh. These people in 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 dire need of help were saved by some sauna patrons dressed only in towels. They were pulled from a car that had plunged into a a Norwegian. I guess this is like a body of water of Fjord. This is the other problem with nobody being here is that when I don't know how to pronounce something, I'm just going to keep mispronouncing it because there's no one there's no one to correct me. Is it Fjord? All I know is that they landed in the water. Okay, I'll tell you about this one. This one happened in Copenhagen, Denmark. It comes to us by way of the AP. Uh, with only towels around their waist, patrons aboard a floating sauna in Norwegian Fjord rescued two people whose car had plunged into the water. The car appeared to have driven off of the quay. So I guess that's like the the little border right there. Um, and it was where the, the ships were docking. And so witnesses told the Norwegian newspaper that initially covered the story that uh, he saw the car stopped before it suddenly accelerated and ended up in the water. The paper reported that the driver had thought the vehicle was in park when he hit the accelerator pedal, which is a weird, I don't drive a lot, but that doesn't seem like, it seems like if you think the car is in park, you still wouldn't slam on the gas. Is I feel like this person just forgot that they weren't in park and then made that up later because that's still that's more confusing unless you can let me know in the chat if I'm just off base on something. But when do you need to slam the gas while you're in park? As the car went down, the two occupants escaped and were on the roof of the vehicle as the sauna raft headed toward them. Um, Yeah, I mean, what would you do? I mean, you obviously need the help. Your car is is sinking into the water. You don't want to have to, you know, fight for your life in the water. But the only person that's there to save you is just is like, take my hand. And they only have the towel. There's probably a part of you that's like, hand me the towel. Like you, if you can't reach me, throw me the towel. You know. Let me see what you think in the chat. Okay. What, oh, yes. What are you doing, my guy? I like that. I like that. Counterpoint Vroom. That comes to us from Eric Crownover. I have thought I was in reverse before. Okay, yeah. KL says, I thought I was in reverse before. And I could see that. I could see being like, oh, okay, I've already put it in reverse. Let's slam on the gas to get where we're trying to go. Oh, we're going the other way, which does take your brain a second to even like understand what's happening if you think you should be going backward and backward starts getting further away it probably takes you a second to be like i'm actually in drive that's my bad but if you're in park in what world do you need to slam on the gas 
in front of the water. I don't know. This whole thing just felt really, really weird. Okay. Going to be moving on now to, uh, to a story that is, has, has touched me. I'm actually going to, I'm going to skip, uh, one ahead real quick because I wanted to make sure I got this one to you before we end it for the day. Um, kids are hard. Kids, kids are hard to watch. You know, they are, they are, they are slippery. Uh, they're quick. And and they wait for you to not be paying attention. I remember this from when I was a kid. Sometimes, you know, people are always like, no, he was just here. Nah, he wasn't. He was waiting for you to turn your head. He was waiting for you to get distracted, get on your phone or something. And then he goes. That's when I would go. When I was little, I was a terror. I could I could get away. You just give me a little bit of time. Let 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 somebody be distracting you, talking to you or something, and I'm off to have my own adventures. I was a big Rugrats fan. So I went off to do my thing quite often. I saw this story and I, man, toddler gets stuck after climbing into a claw machine looking for a toy in an Australian shopping mall. So it's a mouthful of a title that pretty much tells you the entire story. But yeah, this guy was with his kid and the kid, he said, he says that, that he was watching the kid and the kid out of nowhere just got into the claw machine and I don't fully, I think it's possible. I think it's possible. I don't fully believe him just because I've watched parents try to save face before when they had a bad idea and the bad idea resulted in their kid getting stuck or, or their kid getting in trouble or something. So then they, they, they go ahead and they ditch their kid in the story. They're like, I didn't, I didn't know he was trying to do that. I think that this dad noticed how little his kid was and how hard the claw machine was going to be to beat. And so he let his kid get in. I think that's what happened. I'm not going to lie to you. I think he let his kid. I think his kid was like, dad, I think I can make it right. I think I could slip in. And then he was like, little man, do you. All right. Get two toys if you can. And then he got in and then he realized he couldn't get out. And then the dad was like, well, we know the claw doesn't work. Right. So we know we know that imagine using the claw machine to try to get your kid who already got the toy that they wanted. And so then, yeah, they had to call it looks like the maybe they called the fire department and they they got the kid out without injury everyone's fine but what in the baby's day out is this like you would think that the machine would have enough small parts that a whole person couldn't get in because that kid is not it, like it says toddler and he's little but he's not like a baby baby you know what I mean? Like, he's still bigger than all the toys. So at what point, let me know in the chat, where's, where's the most unreasonable place you've lost a child? Okay? Let me see. Dad getting exposed right now from Mike. Yeah, that's what I think happened. The dad probably put him in there. I could see that too. Ju look, Ju Julia's with me on this. I think that this guy was like, I'm not shelling out $10 for a claw that is weak because we know we all know the game and we all know how hard it is to beat. And they even tell us they tell us like, hey, there's only whatever, uh, like between one and five level strength. Right. For the claw. So the so the claw already, even if it has a strong setting on it, let's say you're dealing with an establishment that doesn't want to scam everybody out of their money. Right. All it takes is one of those three claws, one of those little three fingers to be weak. And then the whole thing is weak, right? The game is nearly impossible to beat. Probably one of the most gangster things about it is that the kid seemed unfazed. Like he got, he got to get a toy out of it and everything. But they did have to shatter the glass, which is, which is probably jarring. Like everyone warned him. They didn't just break the glass like he was an axe or something. But like. Yeah, I just I'm I'm blown away by this whole thing. <laughs> um all right, thanks for joining Victor. Uh so not an American establishment. Oversimplified Productions. No, it, this was in Australia. Dad lost me in the backyard. I somehow crawled under the deck. Okay, Frodo. Yeah, that seems pretty reasonable cuz you were still at your house, you know? And the deck is probably 
got enough space for a kid to crawl in there. Okay, Dr. Evil and Mini Me rob a claw machine. That is, look, uh, fir <laughs> first law cage, 92, that is what it feels like. It feels like maybe the dad even wanted a toy. And the son was like, hey, dad, you a good dad. I'm going to do this for you. I'm going to do you a solid. I'm going to get you that toy. And he's like, but son, we're out of change. And the kid's like, we don't need change, dad. I'm getting in the machine. And it does seem like when, you know, when you read to the end of the article, it does seem like the, the rescuers told him to, to grab a toy on the way out, which he should. Yeah. Um, I want to say thank you all so much for tuning in. To good news. Uh, I, I once again, I'm going to be on the road. I'm going to be touring and you can find tickets to all of my dates as well as a list of those dates at joshjohnsoncomedy.com. I'm also posting about them when I post new clips up. I put out new videos every Tuesday. You can check those out. And in the description of those videos, I'll have some of the cities that I'm coming to next. I'll be in Albany. I'll be in Buffalo, Nashville. I'll be on the West Coast. I'll be at Brea, Brea Oxnard. Uh, I plan on traveling the entire entire country so we've we've added places like salt lake city i'm going to be in vegas a little later in the year uh, boston chicago i'm going to do a big show in new york so please send me your email so i can let you know the other reason that we do the e emails which is very very important is i want to make sure that i can get the tickets to you the people that want to come see the show i don't want anyone that wants to come see me having to pay all these up charges from like third party people who are just reselling tickets and everything i want to make sure i can get you the ticket and that we can enjoy the show together so thank you so much for tuning in and i will be back very soon to give